behind the remote sensing and GIS and which uh, the topics which I have covered uh, you might have observed like this can be implemented directly in any given platform like R, MATLAB or some of the uh, modules are readily available in the commercially uh, available softwares like ArcGIS, Adas, NV. So it depends like in uh, whether your organization or institute or college has that particular license or not. And the next uh, question is just a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah, next question is by which algorithm we can predict the drought. So uh, in my last two, three lectures where I have covered the entire uh, uh, like big range of applications of remote sensing and GIS, you can see that drought is one of the topics where I have given you the hint like what are the uh, processes involved in drought assessment or drought mapping or drought prediction because uh, only remote sensing will never help you or never or it cannot be the direct answer of your question. Remote sensing and GIS, these are the tools to get your answers. So in every live session and even in my lectures, I'm highlighting this that don't only depends on the remote sensing and GIS. These are the tools, but you also use other conventional techniques for the processing. So, uh, so some of the algorithm I can say SPI index, those are directly you can use. You can implement in R or MATLAB and you can get your output maps. Now the last question from this particular Excel file. Uh, which software you suggest is best for determining of NDVI? See, NDVI formula is very, very simple. So you don't need any software. You can do it in QGIS, ArcGIS, ADAS, NV. And ideally speaking, theoretically, all the things, all the software or uh, programming languages, they should give you the same result, right? Now, coming back to the first question, uh, how to implement peak ground acceleration uh, equation for construction of PGA map in QGIS. So here I wanted to say uh, that uh, particular to any software, I'm, uh, I will not be able to help you because in this particular course, I intended to you to give the basic information like what is going behind the software, how the uh, processes are working what is the logic behind that so if you want to learn something particular to QGIS, ArcGIS or NV or Arc, uh, ADAS you please refer to their manuals or there are many help uh, videos are available nowadays so I think that's all from this uh, excel file where you people have asked the question now let us see if you have any uh, uh, live questions you have. Uh, okay, is it audible? Uh, I don't know whether uh, you people were able to listen to me. If you cannot listen, please uh, write in this comment box. If you cannot listen, please uh, write it in the comment box.
there was some technical problem so i hope you have uh, listened to my uh, uh, previous answers if you have any question in particular please ask through that uh, youtube channel uh venkates uh, he has asked uh, need some clarification for the drought prediction so uh please refer to my application uh, lectures where i have also included the drought prediction because at the end of my course i thought i will give you the flavor of different application where you can visualize how remote sensing and uh, gis can help you can we predict the future drought by using machine learning algorithm yes it is very much possible only thing is you need to understand you need to understand what are uh, uh, what was the logic which people have already used in drought prediction and then you can modify it or you can introduce machine learning algorithm here and then because if you are a phd student or mtech student definitely your objective is to develop something new or to contribute something new in the r&d world right so that way you can explore this machine learning algorithm uh, for drought assessment or drought monitoring or drought prediction right so but it is very much possible i hope venkates this will help you you are welcome venkates good evening shivam venkates please refer to my application lectures in that i have given and uh, again uh, can you tell me whether you are a mtech student or phd student even if you are a mtech student you might be familiar with the research papers venkates there are many research uh, very good journal papers research paper so as of now immediately i cannot recall and tell you but in case if you can't find any good reference you please write to me i will help you but if you go to any or even nowadays in google if you just uh, search the uh, journal papers related to droughts using remote sensing and gis you will get n number of articles and then you depending upon the journal you can select whatever is uh, whatever attracts you
ओके Yes, Sivam has posted. If we have to predict slope failure, can you tell approach remote sensing and GIS and machine learning together? So, Sivam, uh, this is a very interesting problem, and this is uh, actually you can say that this is a new dimension or new application. This is not new, but. in india very few people have worked on the slope failure using remote sensing so if you have very good understanding about the slope failure you might be knowing what are the different parameters which play critical role in slope failure so like precipitation soil type geology of the area and everything nowadays is available or it can be assessed through remote sensing and gis right so if you have all the layers together then you can use machine learning and then you can go for the uh, slope failure prediction i hope this will help you this will give you an idea like in which direction you have to think and how you can generate different layers Dif different layers are basically the different information captured through different types of remote sensing sensors or sometimes some of the parameters you have to collect yourself in the field then bring it to your lab then generate a gis layer or save file and then you superimpose everything together and then run a algorithm and it could be machine learning i hope this will help you Okay. Since this is the last question answer session or live session for this particular course in this semester uh, i could not get uh, much response in the google said so i am hoping that you are uh, coping coping up with this course very well and uh, you are learning the techniques and hopefully in future you will apply in your research so as of now uh, all the questions have been answered so we will wait for another 5 minutes and then probably we will close the session uh okay so the next question is uh using uh, gis how can we detect permafrost so this is a very basic application of remote sensing because the best part of remote sensing data is all the data set whatever has been captured it is available in the archive only thing is some of the data sets are freely available some of them are or need to be purchased so first of all you need to find out which sensor data you want to use what is the first date of the data when that particular sensor has captured or you can use the multi sensor data as well and then you can go for the 
snow glacier mapping and then you can further go for the permafrost right so this is very easy and this is very basic application of remote sensing here just you have to collect the data from maybe from different agencies or maybe from one agency or sometimes you have to contact them for the data that's all venkates uh, has asked how to get contact with you so my email id is available uh, it is there in the course web page you can always write to me so if you don't have any new question uh, i think all the active members have already asked so maybe uh, let us close this session and uh, all the best for your exams and please uh, uh, and please uh, prepare well and uh, try to understand the basic concept and it hopefully it will be uh, really uh, it will really help you in your future research or maybe your ongoing research thank you very much venkates you please refer to nptel website where this course has been registered so in that course web page you will find all the details related to me related to course and related to my institute iit guwahati right thank you very much